Hello and welcome back to Pyre. I am Lacey Bones and on the last episode we fought the snake lady, which person in the right. And uh, in between episodes, I uh, leveled up uh, Rookie and Jadariel and the girl, May. Yeah, we leveled them up. I'll show you what I uh, clicked uh, their ability song. <laughs> That didn't make sense. Anyway, having prevailed against the withdrawn in a solid performance, you and the others have some moments to recover from the ordeal in the relative safety of the Black Wagon. Sir. Sir, when can we get out of here? What? Green Tail had enough of Udhmer's hospitality for a time? <laughs> for the time. Keep saying uh instead of the. Er. Jody, yeah, thanks. Uh, I'm good. The reader and the stars will point the way, as ever. It's just, so far, we've kept on going north. Is If that's the case again this time, the Sea of Solace spreads north and west from here. For untold leagues, I could not tell you what last the vessel dared to sail those waters. Tizzo asserts himself during the conversation. What is the matter, little one? Uh -huh. Tizzo is trying to get you to look. Uh, wait, 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 wait! I messed up. Tizzo is trying to get you to come look at uh, something outside the wagon. Reader, please go and see what he wants. You excuse yourself and follow the imp into the dark. Find May and the lone minstrel already gazing up at the stars. Can you not read the stars yourself? Then, Mr. Minstrel? I fear. Wait, wait, wait. I fear it is not so simple as matters of can or not. What? I fear it is not so simple as matters of can. Or, or cannot, oh, when it, it comes to me, May. We shall see what the reader has to say, for this is his charge. Why was that a confusing sentence? Anyway, and here he is, in fact. Thank you for fetching him, Tizzo. Shiha. Tizzo is happy to have obliged the lone minstrel. Reader, it would seem the skies have cleared to some extent. Please. Look upon the stars and see where they compel us to go next. You look toward the heavens. It's more north. Right? Yeah, we did that, we did that. Sweet. Uh, the ores? Ores? The azure star. The azure star burns bright over the ruins of a lost frigate in the Sea of Solace. Mm. Uh, the rights beckon you still further north toward the middle of the Sea of Solace. That's not good. You're choking, right? Oh wait, what? That's not his voice. You're joking, right, chum? Does the reader seem the joking type to you, Green Tail? We do not argue with the stars. You You talk like we could just go ride right into the water. Premise covers. Pardon my interruption. Though, perhaps we can. Say, Rod. My client, Sa Sandalwood. He has a way of anticipating such eventualities. My parent name of some mysterious informant. Uh, west of here lies a place called Big Birch Roots. The proprietor is an old companion of his. She may be able to assist us. A small bog dweller outpost at the edge of the sea. 
Hedwin's smiles returns. Hedwin's smile returns. Okay. That sounds like our best shot right now. Let's pack it up and move as soon as possible. Greetings, sweetie. It is good you are here. For he, uh, for there is something that I wish to tell you privately. Do you have a moment? I shall not keep you long, though I know your time is precious. The lone minstrel wishes to tell you something of the right. Right. The lone minstrel seems a well spring of information concerning your quest. Uh, your concerns right now do not include a need to hear accounts of ancient history. Sure, let's hear him out. You bid him to continue and make clear your interest in whatever he has to say. That's Very well. And thank you for your time. And I should further note matters that pertain directly to the rights I must reveal to you alone. For thus I am obliged. In any case... When you confront the withdrawn, confronted the withdrawn, and the witch, old Herm Mildhair, you might re recall she tended to invoke a certain name. Yes, Lech, the, bo the astral born. I hesitate to say it even now. Sorry, I'm moving around, I'm trying to adjust. Would be give what? You would be forgiven if you took the ravings of old Milhe for mere nonsense. However, her words, as it turns out, ring with a certain truth. Before the union of the eight scribes, when first they found themselves here in the downside, this land was even less hospitable. If that can be believed. It was ruled over by the greater titans. The one called Islech was the eldest of the most fearsome and most fearsome of thought. Greater titans, colossal monsters that once roamed the downside. And we know that. Just the same, the scribes managed to defeat it. They later used the Slech sewn hide in Iker bind the Book of Rites, Iker. However, Islech did not truly die, for by some accounts, it seems to be incapable of death. The creature is regenerating even now, but very, very slowly. Its vow is to devour this land and everything in it. Only then can it return onto whatever plane that banished it to ours. Codna Benictus. So, in a way, it is in egg it is an exile, just like you. If ever should the creature be reborn, it shall be many ages hence. Thus, the ravings of old Milde are more or less inconsequential for the while. Yet the history of your slash Ech is inexorable, inexorable, linked to the rites, and therefore must be known. I trust your research of the book shall lead you to discover more in time. I hope all this is of some resurgence, reassurance. And now, I leave you to your more immediate concerns. I shall go check to see how everyone is faring at this time. He heads out into the evening, bidding you a good rest of the evening. Okay, so we know the history of this place now. Let's continue the journey. A big bird protrudes. Is someone here to help pursue the stars? Okay. This place, uh, let us go to see my client's companion 
as soon as you are ready. Seek. Oh, nope. Someone wants to talk. Oh. He seems to have something on his mind. You find Ruki rummaging in the corner of the black wagon. He's that bad, hey, Charm. You know what? It's good to having somebody else around besides those two. So, come to think of it, there's something I wanted to get uh, you to take on. And you have to promise to tell me honestly. Uh, Would you say yes, uh, what I mean is... Uh, um, he hesitates trying to find the words. Uh, uh, look, what I'm trying to say is... um. You sense something serious is troubling him. He moves in very close, making sure no one else is in earshot. It's about my mustache. I've been getting some conflicting reports about it. Would you say my mustache, uh, that it makes me look a bit, uh, you know, unscrupulous? Ruki wishes to know if you think his mustache see, suits him. It, uh, say it looks perfectly fine. Say it might be better off you, huh? He might be better off without it. Say nothing. Hmm, it is very handsome. And if anything, and if anything, it gives him a distinguished sort of look. Something about it makes him appear less trustworthy and perhaps less youthful too. Well, I mean, it's kind of stylish in a hipster sort of way. And I like it. A dog with a mustache? It's it's adorable. So yes, I would say I like it. You suggest that Rookie's mustache looks perfectly fine. He grins wide at you. Couldn't agree more, chum. I knew straight away that you're a real judge of character. Anyway, got to check the wheels again for mites. See you around. He bounds off out of the wagon. His mustache is what gave me his accent. <laughs> Buki gained plus one hope for the next right. Sweet. Sick Big Bertrude. Oh boy. Big Bertrude's is a sickly gathering of bog dwellers who stay within shadows, yet you can feel their eyes surveying everything. The lone minstrel steps forward. Sandalwood, send us. Send us. Those words are enough to make the bog dwellers snap to attention. They emerge from the mud and dark begin inspecting your blood black wagon with their strange tools. <laughs> One of the bog dwellers slithers forth. She is larger than the rest and leaves no doubt that she commands the others. Huh. Nari, Nari. Thou shalt speak as the name Sandalwood. We should know his whereabouts. Reveal them to us. Good day to you, Big Bertrand. It is a pleasure to meet you at last. For Sandalwood always spoke highly of you and your handiwork. <sighs> no, he did. He did. In turn. We know who thou must be, yet thou speakest of the past, Sandalwood. Doth he, doth he, what doth he, yet live? Speak plain and quickly. Cognavenitus. To be quite frank with you, madame, I do not know for certain, for I have been apart from him for some time, carrying out his will, though I have every faith that I, Sandalwood, lives. As for his current whereabouts, I understand that he awaits us somewhere near 
walking waking wood beyond the waters. A labyrinth of a forest on the western half of Black Basin. Oops, my mouse hit it. Uh, but da -da -da -da, but few, few know their way around it. The path to the sacred Mount Alodil lies far beyond these suffocating woods. Okay. We wish to seek him there. Though, as you can see, our wagon is ill-suited for the task. The one called Bertrude frowns at this, studying the lone minstrel all the while. She is a bog dweller once feared and respected in the commonwealth for her sorceress work. By your grace, Big Bertrude. The lone minstrel turns away, but Hedwin stops him. Commanders. Hold on. Are you sure about this? Leaving the wagon in this in their care. All shall be in accordance with my client's plan. You keep calling Sandalwood your client. He must reward you well. I in a manner of speaking, he helped me find a sense of purpose I thought lost. Edwin nods at this, then turns to you. Well, my friend, I guess we'll see what happens, right? I'm off to let the others know. You find yourself with time for your vocations, while the bog dwellers go about their business. Uh, ways in which you can make yourself useful during occasional moments of free time. Let's see. Oops, what did I hit? Um, search the surrounding area for valuables. Oh, okay. Forge. Study in private. Mentor a companion. Hone hmm. your skills as a reader to grant small global bonuses to your fellow exiles during rites. We did this last time. It's nice. Um, but I think it's time we should start uh, improving the skills of the whole party. Let's do that. You find a relatively quiet clearing to study the Book of Rights with undivided attention. Through greater understanding comes the reader's influence. Focus on which aspect of the Book of Rights of the Book of Rights. Its teachings and their wisdom, its authors and their powers, its innate mystic power, its fundamental purpose. Why is this one master the other aspects of the book to unlock this? Oh, got it. Cool. Hmm. Presence. Each point of glory raises how much fire. Your exile steal to the adversary's pyre. And the rights, that's probably means damage. Mm, each point of quickness makes your fellow. Uh, we know what quickness is. Uh, what's this hope? You know what hope is. Um, I'm always up for some uh, speed, so let's do that. Speed is good. You concentrate on your knowledge of the eight scribes and how, together, they compose the Book of Rights among their many feats. Inspiration comes to you in a flash, whether from the book or from within, you cannot tell. You gain the reader's influence, celerity, celerity, finish studying. Continue the journey. Ay, my tuchets. Ah, my seat is not comfortable. All right, the lone minstrel finds you early the next day. Reader, it is ready. Please, come have a look. The others are already there. The lone minstrel beckons you to come to see the wagon. Step inside. Is it fancy? Well, they added a table. Nice. The black wagon appears different now than it did even a day before. The hall is fully sealed and reinforced, and all manner of na nautical equipment adorns the port side. Oh, I didn't notice that. 
It's a fish. I. Wow. You people seeing this? No, that's not his voice. You people seeing this? I'm gonna look. Have a look around. Uh, the, the, the wagon should be fit for sea voyage. Let us depart at the earliest convenience. What about Big Bertrude? Huh? She then appears as if on cue. Tell that Sandalwood he owes us twice over. If I may, Big Bertrude, you could tell him yourself. If you wish to accompany us in our voyage north, our group would welcome someone of your vast experience. Mm -hmm. Dare thee make flirtations upon us? Probably. No, I... Enough. But should he see that sandalwood, tell him also to come visit us again. Now, be gone from here. And tell no one that we were paid in favors. She slithers off without another word. Soon, the lone minstrel breaks the silence. We are fortunate that she assisted us, but we should go. Just as she said, I know the navigational controls and shall explain. This is so exciting. I know, I don't know how to swim. Tizzo seems to share May's enthusiasm for heading out to sea. Oh. I am beginning to feel ill already. Your black wagon became seaworthy. The sea of solace awaits. Set sail. All right, I'm gonna end the episode off here. On the next episode, we'll go to Wyrm Gulf. So I just wanna say thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. Please take care of yourselves. This is Pi, I am Lazy Bones, and I'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.